Welcome to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan, where we're going to cast and blast you right out of this world with some of the best hunting and fishing stories that you can't even imagine. This is John Hennigan, our host Frank Shelby, and we got a couple of minutes before we get into the main stuff. But Frank, first of all, <clears throat> let's mention that uh, our trip to Alaska, July 28th to the 2nd, there's so many people that their schedule wouldn't work, so we're having a trip to um, Salmon Falls in Ketchikan, Alaska. And the dates are not specific yet, but uh, at the end of the show, we're going to be talking to Matt Herod, who's the the manager up there, and we'll see if we can nail down uh, those dates. But it is absolutely incredible. You get one-third off of the normal price, and the normal prices for Alaska is very inexpensive. This is a high-end, all-inclusive resort. You, know, you get to go out in uh, a guided um, cruiser and then, uh, you know, take your own 18 foot uh, boat with a center console and do self guided where you can come and go as you please but yeah. uh, anyway we'll probably talk about that at the end of the show and then yeah. uh, we've got some great guests uh, that you have put together thank you and, you're welcome and one of them is somebody I met at a conference and his name is James Rickard and he's from Bell, B-E-L, Campo Farm. And just an incredible story of what they do. Uh, if you like beef, you're going to really enjoy this. And I would say that uh, on our webpage, one of the most popular pages is recipes. So I think people do like to hear about that. Anyway, yeah. um, Frank, apparently you're healing okay now. Yeah, I'm going out uh, next Friday where I'm taking uh, two clients out. Uh, we're raising money for the Olive Crest Children's Home. Mm -hmm. Last year, our club raised $60,000, just our club, not wow. all the other people that were involved. Wow. Yeah, that's but we such raised a great over thing. 200 yeah. and some odd thousand. We're shooting for 350000 this year. Wow. And I know we're going to make it. If anybody yeah. wants to donate, they can just punch up. Olive Crest and send them a little bit of money. But they, ninety-eight percent of the money that we raise goes straight to the children that and is, the family. That is, I'll tell you what, you know, some of the national nonprofits uh, they keep ninety percent of it. But anyway, uh, we're going to be right back with you on Fish Hunt Talk Radio. The soft science footbed absorbs the shock of pounding waves, engine vibration, and even rocky terrain. Soft Science shoes are roomy and relaxed, and they drain and dry quickly. Check out the Soft Science Fin fishing shoes and boots and the Fin H2O for kayaking and canoeing. They're lightweight, slip-resistant, and won't mark your deck. See the new styles for men and women, and get your pair on at softscience.com. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real fun adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real fun trips are inclusive, easy, no worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. If you are still using a plastic hard shell cooler, things have changed for the better. AO coolers are lighter with twice the efficiency of the traditional bulky coolers. AO coolers are the best available soft-sided cooler with three-quarter inch high-density closed cell foam insulation. They will keep ice frozen for 24 hours in hot weather. Easy to carry, less space, it fits product inside for better performance. Go to aocoolers.com to order or find a retailer available at West Marine. With a long pedigree, the Snow Bee brand today offers the very best equipment modern technology can provide. Started in Europe, Snow Bee is now providing quality fly fishing gear in the USA. Waders, clothing, rods, reels, fly lines, bags, and innovative new accessories. Enjoy your sport and leisure time more than ever. The affordable value of Snow Bee makes it available to everyone. Go to snowbee-usa.com. 
Have you noticed the changes in Google lately? Did anybody line you out? You can't fake it anymore. They know who said it first, who said it best, who said it the most, who was the most popular, and that just happens to be me since the late 80s, which means that I can put up a page, a post, or a website, optimize it properly, spread it around to 22 million people, and put you on top of your results pages for your chosen searches basically overnight. WhiteMountainBusiness.com Don't want to wait that long? Already have a website that you thought was optimized and doesn't rank anywhere? I can fix that too. Maybe you don't want to wait. Maybe you just want to call me. 928-228-9228 That's 928-228-9228 I've done it for literally thousands and I can do it for you. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan and our host, Frank Selby. And uh, Frank has invited a very special guest on the line. And I think that I will let uh, Frank introduce Siri. Frank? Siri is my one of my best friends. She has fished all over. She's been in, what, 15, 20 magazines at least. And... She's one of the great girl guides I know, and I still call, call ladies girls, so if you get mad at me, I'm in trouble. But I've known Siri for over years, and uh, we fish together a lot, but I haven't been out to Florida, and she told me I could come out this year and fish with her, because she's semi-retired, but... She still takes some of her old clients, and she's going to take me to a couple of her secret spots. Mm-hmm. Am I lying, Siri? Well, no, you're not lying. But there, there are some events that you just don't experience anywhere else. And and uh, my favorite is off of uh, Key Biscayne, the lighthouse. There's a real deep channel around it, and there are a bunch of flats. And on a rising tide, the eagle rays come up like a flock of birds. And they eat crustaceans, so the permit right on the backs of the eagle rays. So if you cast to the backs of these fish like a flock of birds, you'll catch huge these huge permit. Uh, that you that you have to experience because I don't think that's something you've ever done. No, it, it isn't. I've fished for permit, but I've never done it that way. Exactly, and these I'm flocks ready. of birds are amazing. Well, do they uh, do, do you um, use a boat? Do you use a ladder? You fish from shore? Uh, no, a boat. You? you you know definitely a boat because yeah. they're all the flats and they're all deep channels. And mm-hmm. and I don't know if you're familiar with the fishing in Florida, but you know we fish tides here, and and when the the tides fall down, everything goes into the channels, so all the fish are there. So you wait for the tide to come, start coming back up and then catch the fish as they're coming onto the flats. You know, they're looking for crustaceans. But not the stingrays. It has to be the eagle rays because they're the ones that eat the crustaceans. Mm. And do, do you know the difference between an eagle ray and a stingray? Well, I know stingrays uh, um, have this little barb thing on the back, and you don't want them to put it into you. Yeah, well, they they all have those, but uh, I mean, to 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 sight fishing, the eagle rays have spots on them. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to cast to the wrong wrong species because they don't eat the crustaceans, and they won't be digging them up off of the flats, and that's what attracts the permits. And that's what, why the permits follow them. Well, do the do the permits follow them because they also eat crustaceans. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, they do. They eat the crabs. Um, uh, and, and when the, the eagle rays, their, the tips of their um, uh, fins will knock the, the crustaceans up to the air because they're foraging for them. Oh. So it's like a, it's like a banquet. Hmm. It's a feeding frenzy. Well, what do you... Yeah. What well, do you, like in the olden days, we used to watch the birds to find bait. Now the birds watch us to find fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this has been a role reversal here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Siri, uh, 
uh, you still, you, you only keep most of your old clients, but if there was somebody who wanted to do it? They, they would have to be a special friend, and they'd have to go to the his and her fly fishing shop, and you'd have to vouch for them. Um, uh, because, you know, we're, we're pretty much catch and release only. Uh, you know, maybe Christmas we might keep a fish, but uh, for the most part, we just, you know, hook them and release them. That's the I mean, we've way. seen such a yeah we we've seen such a change in the fishery here. We, you know, we've had a lot of problems with the red tide over on the on the west coast. It was the worst ever. I mean, most of the west coast was just wiped out. Hotels, you know, just rotten fish everywhere. Uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, so you know, the fishery changes. I mean, the first time Flamingo is like the main base uh, down here that people go out of to fish Florida Bay. And there's a place called Snake Bites. You just make a little left turn when you go out there. with this whole bunch of finger channels. And so you'll fish either the flats or the finger channels, depending, depending on your species. But it's usually reds and snook, uh, that kind of thing. You know, sea trout. You'll get some jacks. You get those things everywhere. But this is the first time I've ever seen triple tail. In the decades that I've been fishing there, I mean, triple tail usually hang out at the crab buoys you know, off off of the, the coast and to see them there. I mean, good size triple tail too. It was quite something. Mm. So it's always a surprise and you're always learning, you know, with the change we've had also from the the chemicals that come down from the farming, you know, the drift down to, because the Everglades is a river, even though you know, it doesn't look like a river, it goes through the aquifer and it comes all the way down and the chemicals have changed the fishery. Yeah. Uh, what would be the best time for somebody who wanted to come down and fish down there? Well, the In best Europe time and... is May, and that's when you get the Grand Slam. You know, and you have to get it just before, you know, we, I mean, we have spawning season, and then it's pretty much like a trout farm. I mean, you can pretty much walk on the fish sometimes. <laughs> They're so thick. But, you know, that to me is not sporting, and it's, and it's not fun. And we've lost so many fish, you try not. But if you want to get as many different species, May is the month. And you usually have to book up a year ahead of time because that's when everybody comes because they want to get a Grand Slam. And I'm, I'm sending everybody to Alaska. There you so go. What? <laughs> hey, we're we're, we're going to meet in Montana this year, right? Bev already said well, we could. Well, I, I, I hope so. You know, if I could convince your wife, I've got to send her some good hiking spots. I've been trying to look those up to, you know, kind of get in I there. Know. But I can't tell you about that spot. But I will promote. Uh, I will promote uh, Alaska. My buddy has a lodge up there, Igwegik Lodge, and it is unbelievable. It's, it's the only lodge that I know of that has its own honey hole right outside the lodge where you can just stand on the shore and cast to it. You don't have to get to a plane and fly everywhere. In fact, I'll see people coming from other lodges, you know, in their boats to fish the honey hole, which I don't think is cool when Alaska is supposedly a quarter the size of the United States and <laughs> they got to come over to your lodge and fish. Yeah, that happens a lot when there's a good hole. Uh, the other thing, uh, definitely, Bev said that we were, we are going to come up. Really? When you, yeah, she already said we're going to kind of change it around so we're in West Yellowstone at a certain time so we can come up and spend a couple of days with you. Oh yeah, there's some there's some really great fishing up there. You know, you know, because I like sight fishing. I'm, yeah. you know. And uh, and top water. I'm a t too much. Uh, that's why I go that time of season because he has more terrestrials. It's just before they switch over to uh, streamers, which okay. I don't really care for. But everybody's got their own favorite okay. fishing. Now, yeah, Frank, my, we've, we've... my favorite is any time I'm on the Madison or the Yellowstone or the Gibbons. Uh, Frank. Yeah. Frank, we've got less. Yeah. We got less than a minute. Okay. Oh, less than a minute. Yeah. Okay. You, Your shot. So, my shot. Well, I I, I do want to uh, make a point of uh, promoting Igwegit Lodge. It's AlaskaLodge.com, and go on and look at the pictures of these these trout. I mean, the average size is twenty nine to thirty inches. Well, and uh, real quickly, where is it? 
It's uh, on Iguagic, uh, Iliamna Lake in this town of Iguagic in Bristol Bay. Oh, Bristol Bay, okay. It's close right. to the, yeah, Katmai and what's, Peninsula. What's, what's the name again? Iguagic, I G U I G I G. But if you type in alaskalodge.com, okay, it takes there you, you go. To Brad Waitman's. There you go. Uh, uh, it would get lodge. Okay. And, uh, it, I mean, the food is great, and he okay. is not only a, a fishing right. guide for decades, but he also is a, okay. a bear guide. Well, we're going we're gonna to have to go. We appreciate oh. uh, take, Thank okay. you for taking the time. But, unfortunately... Great talking the, to you and looking com- forward to yeah, seeing the, you out here, Frank. The, unfortunately, the computer... Yeah, runs, don't runs worry. The I, I want to go see a Playboy <laughs> buddy, a Playgirl buddy and okay. movie star. Okay. Oh, you promise not to talk about that. Yeah, okay. All I, right. I, I didn't talk about Sherry, it. I, Sherry, I Sherry, thank, <laughs> thanks again. You were delightful. We appreciate that. You are listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, go to our website. Fish Hunt! Yeah, it's a big one. For passionate sports fishermen who value first-class fishing experiences paired with personalized service and amenities, all-inclusive Salmon Falls Fishing Resort on the Inland Passage reinvents the Ketchikan fishing getaway. Guests enjoy exceptional gourmet cuisine, superior fishing excursions, fully guided charter or self-guided in center console boats accommodating three anglers, updated guest rooms, and suites. On-site fishing processing to clean, freeze, and pack your catch. Rooms range from log cabin rustic to modern. Our 52 rooms offer the ultimate in comfort after a long day of sightseeing, fishing, and exploring Ketchikan. Non-anglers love Salmon Falls, too. Shopping along Creek Street, kayaking, hiking, whale watching, or gathering around our fire pits with a hot beverage. All at prices less than expected. Just pull up Salmon Falls Resort in your search engine. The East Cape of Baja, Mexico is world famous for sport fishing. Dorado, tuna, wahoo, marlin, sailfish, roosterfish, and parco. The Van Warmer Resorts make dreams come true at a price all can afford. Hotel Palmas de Cortez, Playa del Sol, and Hotel Punta Colorado have the biggest and best sport fishing fleet in all of Mexico. Call toll-free to 877-777-TUNA to find out how affordable world-class fishing can be. The finest resorts and the best boats in East Cape. Call 877-777-TUNA. Vagabundos del Mar. Boat and Travel Club has 42 years experience introducing RVers to the joys of Mexico. Specializing in Baja, Vagabundos leads caravans and sponsors fishing tournaments, trailer boat cruises, and weekend getaways in Mexico and the West. Vagabundos Del Mar also saves its 10,000 members tons of money on low-cost auto insurance. Stay up to date on Mexican travel with the printed newsletter online at V-A-G-A-B-U-N-D-O-S dot com or call 800-474-BAJA. With a long pedigree, the snow Snowbee brand today offers the very best equipment modern technology can provide. Started in Europe, Snowbee is now providing quality fly fishing gear in the USA. Waders, clothing, rods, reels, fly lines, bags, and innovative new accessories. Enjoy your sport and leisure time more than ever. The affordable value of Snowbee makes it available to everyone. Go to snowbee-usa.com. A full-service fly shop, his and her Fly Fishing offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of fishhunttalkradio.com or listen live Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to to your order in-house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan and our host, Frank Selby. And we have, you know, what we try and do, Frank and I, when we're putting things together, putting the show together, um, we try and help um, discover places. They could be something that you've never heard about, something you've always dreamed about, or something you don't know about. And, you know, we like to be able to introduce you to some interesting people and some fun and exciting trips. Well, this one, well, I don't think we have ever done a show on Oklahoma lakes. So I'll let Frank take over and introduce Lance. Yeah, Lance. Lance, are you there? I'm here. Thanks uh, for having first me. First thing we want to do is get out your website 
and any information when the best time and then we'll start talking about spoonbill catfishing okay my website is www.lancesguideservice.com and anybody can call or text me at 918-607-7357 and you can also see us on facebook every fishing trips on there at Lance's Guide Service. Okay, so that's Lance's Guide Service. Just type that in and you'll find it. And then, yeah. uh, and tell us about uh, um, what it is you do there, about where you are, where you fish, and how you do it, and what are you going to catch? We fish primarily northeastern Oklahoma here. Um, our biggest out-of-state draw is our spoonbill. Um, they're paddle fish, but we all call them spoonbill around here. Uh, we we also do catfish and crappie and striper and everything else. Go ahead, Frank. They, uh, spoonbill catfish is one of the favorite, my favorite food to eat, fish to eat. And uh, what's the average size anymore? When I was a kid, they were a lot bigger than they are now. And that was people like me that would take six or seven. <laughs> Well, our average size is ranging anywhere from 35 to 45 pounds, and we get them up to the 80 to 100 pound range. Uh, not as often as we used to, but we still do. Yeah. And uh, what's the best time to come down the snag for Spoonbill? Well, we start doing it again in October, and as soon as we start getting some cool nights, um, it cools the water down, and we go all the way through the end of April. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm not, depends on on what on what kind of weather you want to fish in. Well, I'm, to tell us a bit about the weather. I'm not really familiar with that area. And you know, do you have four seasons? Is it uh, how cold does it get in the winter? We do. Yeah, yeah, we have four seasons. Um, the our, our fall is is beautiful here. Uh, spring is obviously uh, nice. Winter time, we have a lot of people come down from say Minnesota and Michigan. Yeah. And, they think it's warm, then we think it's cold, but they think it's warm and ready to fish. <laughs> we have a top on the boat and a heater and everything, so it's yeah. not bad at all. Yeah. And uh, tell us a bit about your boat and, and what you do on if, when you take somebody out. What's the typical day? What's the process? Uh, we There's two of us that guys um, full time, and we both run 24 foot Sea Art Pro Cat 240 boats. Wow. Uh, it, if the weather's bad, we put the full enclosure up and with cold, we put the heater in and, and go out and have a good time. Wow. That's a comfortable boat. Do you it furnish nagging gear? I furnish everything. All you need is your fishing license and any food or drinks and be ready to have fun. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, one of my clients, uh, uh, he calls you love it instead of your real last day but i thought that he says you'll love him no matter who goes out with you and i go i'm not going to say that on the air and i thought about it i decided that i would mm-hmm. <laughs> he says you're one of the best well a cu- couple things let's talk about you know you i know that you sp- fish different species but let's get back to catfish because mm-hmm. you know they're catfish there's a lot of different species and you know they're pretty much all over the world but uh, what is a spoonbill? A spoonbill, uh, it's actually not a catfish. That's the People don't realize that. It's really more of the sturgeon family. Uh-huh. It's not a true catfish. Uh, they are prehistoric. And they have, they're, they're right there. The age is of the sturgeon, uh, same, same time period as when they evolved. Wow. Uh, along with the alligator gar. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the biggest one I ever snagged w- weighed twice what I weighed. <laughs> That's not like a fish story. Left. No, I've got a photograph of it. It's laying in an international truck, flatbed. The spoon is against the cab. The tail's hanging over the end, and it's an eight-foot bed. So how did it fight? Pardon me? How was How the fight? fight? The fight to to bring it in. We were pulled around for about an hour and twenty minutes in a, <laughs> a flat bottom skiff, and then Maynard had to take the rod. My arms were so sore. I'm not saying my age, 
but I was under 15 and over 10. And, well, most and people I, come and, and do this for the first time, say it's the most fun they've had freshwater fishing. And uh, yeah. where, where do you find spoonfish? Now, what you do primarily, apparently, is, is fish in the uh, Oklahoma lakes. And again, I don't think we've had anybody on that did that. But where else can you find these spoonbill? Is it uh, are they are they scattered around the country? Kansas, they are, Missouri. We, we have the highest population. But uh, over in and Missouri, right. there's a good population, like the Ozarks and mm -hmm. Beaver. Mm -hmm. Like. But we were uh, there's, some we're, up, there's some up in Nebraska also. Well, we were talking about uh, you know taking them for food. Yeah, um, and I don't know if you get one or two that size, you don't need too many of them. But uh, you know, how, what's your favorite way to prepare? Favorite way that you prepare them? Um, I did a TV show uh, a couple years ago, and we cooked them over a campfire with a cast iron skillet, mm -hmm. and just did some butter and well, little black corn beans. Beans. Very good. You, was, did you did you bread them, or you just throw them in the skillet? No, we did not. We we didn't bread those. We just put a whole lot of healthy butter in there and over well, the campfire. It was, it was really good. Yeah. Well, I always believed the more butter, the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you chunk them or did you do fillets? Uh, we did fillet. We did small fillets. We, we uh, okay. I guess we, we cut, them, cut one fillet up into about six pieces. Yeah. There, there. That is the best eating fish, in my opinion. Mm. And uh, I, I can remember on the river, if we would uh, take a piece, and we used to take a brown paper bag, and an iron skillet, and pour a whole big thing of, uh, oh God, the can of lard in there. Oh yeah. And then shake them up in, in squares. They we cut and then cut the big fillets, and you'd cut them in inch squares. And sometimes mm -hmm. the inch would be twelve inches long. And then you'd cut the inch down to inch of square cubes, mm -hmm. and that was the best eating I've ever had. And I don't think there's anything better than sitting on a log mm -hmm. having a plate of that. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like that's, uh, you know, you got now the method of catching them. You say primarily you snag them. Can you give us a, an idea on how you catch these things? Yeah, we, we have to snag them. They're a, they're a filter feeder. They filter plankton, much like our bait fish or mm -hmm. other small fish. It's amazing they can get as big as they do, filtering yeah. microorganisms. Yeah. One more question. If somebody wanted to come down and fish with you, what's the best time that you would recommend that they don't have a year wait? <laughs> October's hard to beat. October, and, and there's not a lot of boat traffic. Everybody around here gets in the woods and starts hunting, and the fish stack up, and it's a really good time. So out there, anybody that wants to go, make sure you mention that you heard him on Fish Hunt Talk Radio and tell him that that you want to come down. What, you think that's a good idea, John? Well, you know what, Frank? The problem with doing this show is we just keep finding more and more places to go, but you can't. What can I tell you? I got a I got a long list of uh, got to do stuff now. Well, well, what's it? Give us an idea about, um, you know, what town are you in? Uh, where is the uh, Oklahoma Lakes, and how do you get there? I am primarily located in the Tulsa area. Okay. Uh, there's three. There's three lakes here that we fish primarily. Mm -hmm. um, Grand Lake, Fort Gibson, and Ulaga. And between and those three, I usually have people stay around Tulsa. Uh, that way we can go to whichever one's best. Oh, I see. So you just fly into Tulsa and, and you arrange transportation? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's a typical trip and what does it cost? Um, typical trip, we usually fish around four hours. Some people don't make it that long. They get worn out. <laughs> uh, they, are, they, they are a hard fighting fish. You can only keep one. So uh -huh. um, you, can, you can catch a release all you want. But once you keep your fish, you're done fishing. 
Uh, but they are big, so you have plenty of meat. That's mm-hmm. not an issue. Uh, we charge fifty for two, for one two anglers. Uh, I'm sorry, say um, that again. How much? It's three fifty for mm-hmm. for one or two anglers. Really? Um, that's and cheap. Then, and then a hundred a dollars additional. That, that our boats can take about six people on them. That wow, that's very ex- uh, inexpensive. Yeah. Why do you think I? Uh, why do you think my customers like to go to him? There They're go. always coming home with over okay. fifty pounds of fish. All righty. Well, Frank, we're down to about thirty seconds now, but uh, one more time, uh, Lance. It is Lance. Keep going we're to find you on the, on the internet. Oh, LanceandGuideService.com. And we're also on La- Lance's L-A-N-C-E-S. Yeah. yeah, Lance's fly fishing. No, no. <laughs> okay. Lance's guide service. Guide, guide service. Okay. All right. We got to go. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Go to the website and listen to it all you want. I think we need some more cowbell. The road stretches for miles in front of you. And with the Ram 1500, you'll be able to reach mile after open mile. It gets a best-in-class 25 miles per gallon highway, so your destination won't just be determined by your gas gauge, but by your gauge for achievement. And the Ram 1500 is the first-ever back-to-back Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Guts. Glory. Ram. See your local Ram dealer today for great deals. EPA estimated 25 MPG highway based on V6 4x2. A full-service fly shop, his and her fly fishing, offers FFI certified international fly fishing instructor and guide service with Frank Selby. Listen to Frank as host of fishhunttalkradio.com or listen live Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Sirius XM Radio Channel 211. Custom flies are handmade to to your order in-house in Newport Beach. Fishing in Mexico, Belize, Florida, or the Rockies, Frank and the staff will deliver exactly what you need. Flies and gear. Google his and her fly fishing. A few years ago, a sailor set out to design a boat shoe that was comfortable and stable, non-skid, and wouldn't mark the decks. Today, these incredibly comfortable shoes are worn by anglers, boaters, professional guides, and charter captains. Go to softscience.com to see more. Soft Science shoes and boots are lightweight and shock absorbent with just the right level of support. Several styles come in all sizes. Enjoy the Soft Science shoe in the water and out. Check them out at softscience.com. Alaskan RV Butler. Guiding, fishing, hiking, sightseeing, adventure. The Alaskan RV Butler. Like a cruise on wheels in the comfort of an RV. View the wonders of Alaskan interior, streams, ocean, and wildlife. Or fish for the big one. All while pampered by Mike, the Alaskan RV Butler. Mike's inclusive tours serve butter-drenched shellfish and mouth-watering steaks. Mike is your personal chef, chauffeur, guide, and planner. And for the real Alaska, contact MikeRVButler at gmail.com. That's MikeRVButler at gmail.com. It's time for you to take a real fun adventure. Join a hosted fishing adventure to Alaska or Baja with the staff of Fish Talk Radio. Real fun adventures can book you on any adventure you desire. Bring your fishing friends or meet new ones. Fish Talk Radio gets the best deals from our sponsors to give you the best possible price. Real fun trips are inclusive, easy, no worry packages to the most popular fish grounds. Trips start around $600. Go to reelfunadventures.com. back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan with our host Frank Selby. And let's see, how can I put this? Um, there's been, a, I guess, a resurgence and, uh, you know, I'll have uh, uh, James kind of elaborate on that, of um, steakhouses, high-end, high-quality beef. And this is where it comes from. So if you're not a vegan, um, then you're going to love this segment. But I have to say that on, on our website, one of the most popular pages is recipes. 
So we want to do something. It's not wild game and it's not fish. But if you if you're looking for the best of the best, uh, James uh, can provide that for you. So, James, would you mind kind of a, giving a quick overview of the Bel Campo? That's B E L C A M P O Farm, Bel Campo Farm, and give us a quick idea of what you do. Great. Well, first off, my name is James Rickert, and I am the farm director for Bel Campo Farms. We're a vertically integrated meat company. We have our farms and ranches located in far northern California uh, by Mount Shasta. And we have our own USDA inspected processing facility. And that is located up in Wairika. And we supply a series of restaurants, uh, series of restaurants and butcher shops that are also under our same ownership group. And uh, those, are our, those are called Bel Campo. We've got a cluster in the San Francisco Bay Area, another group of uh, butcher shops and restaurants in Los Angeles, and then we just opened up our New York City location in March of 2019. Now, you know, I, you know, I, I used to be a, a broiler man at a steakhouse, and I used to cut meat. I know a little bit about meat. And one of the things that irritates me, you go into a grocery store, and you see someone looking at the meat, and they go, ooh, look at that. It's nice and red. It must be good. To me, it looks like roadkill. <laughs> but uh, because that, that's not what you want, trust me. If the meat's a bright red and, you know, you don't see um, white marbling in it, just forget it, okay, unless you're going to make a stew because it's as far as the steak, it ain't going to work. But tell us about your method and what it is that you produce and how you do it. Absolutely. So we raise uh, all the different animal uh, proteins. We have a beef program, a pastured pork program, a grass-fed lamb program, a pastured poultry program. We raise turkeys, and we also uh, do a limited uh, amount of duck and goose as well. Whoa. So we try to cover uh, the whole spectrum of different proteins, but... Obviously, um, the biggest one that we raise, the most important to our company, is beef. And uh, our, our beef product, we are a certified organic, certified humane, grass-fed and grass-finished beef product. And we dry-age it at our facility, and then we, uh, so we dry-age for a full carcass hang for seven days, and then we do additional uh, dry-aging of our middles, and then we uh, take that down to our butcher shops and... and uh, prepare that for consumers wow. well the uh, you know traditionally you know you're you know the best meat comes out of the midwest but you know and it's you know they'll bring the cow up to i don't know maybe a year or so uh, and then uh, put it in a feedlot for a couple of weeks and it comes out with you know a lot of fat in it and a lot of marbling but yours is a completely different method from that so kind of go exactly. over that real quick. Yeah, what I'm doing is uh, is really what my you know great grandfather used to do, and um, you know we're we're just finishing animals on pastures the way they should be um, the way they should be raised, and uh, their diet. We're not putting things in their diet that uh, they're not used to. Uh, they're ruminants and they graze, and so what we do to to get them to finish because a lot of people have um, you know a lot of people honestly have had uh, a bad experience with grass-fed beef in the past mm -hmm. and you know i've talked to a, a lot of people they're like oh grass-fed never mind yeah i'll take a corn-fed steak any day there you go uh, but you know a lot of people haven't had good grass-fed um we are a company where we're, we're we're facing the consumer so the person that you know the person that's cutting the meat is getting the same, you know, getting a paycheck from the same group that I am. And so I'm the farmer, we've got a processor, and then we've got the butchers. But the butchers, I mean, we all need to be accountable to the consumer. And the success of our business comes with repeat customers. So it's in our best interest to produce the best quality meat possible. Mm -hmm. And it's very important, you know, grass-fed beef, they're become, I mean, just overwhelmingly uh, more interest in this uh, particular segment for health reasons. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have realized that, you know, the big fatty corn fed steaks, although they may taste good, they're really not all that good for you. And so we're yeah. seeing a huge demand for, from people that really are focused on health 
and they want to get really good nutrient dense and rich food and a good high quality grass fed grass finished beef product is is ideal for that Mm -hmm. frank are you there yeah i got one question for him i'm gonna it's catch 22 yeah do you do the new york cut and the kansas city cut and what's the difference between the two i I put you on the spot a new york cut versus a kansas city cut well i'll tell you what i'm the guy out there raising the animals and then we've got a guy that runs our butchery and so he'd be the best person to to answer that question for you so i I don't have a good answer unfortunately but uh yeah i'm I'm the farm director catch 22 yeah it's a catch 22 both of them are identical cut okay okay i'll remember that (laughs) yes but, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I've heard that. What's a New York cut? But anyway, um, you know, what, what, first of all, I, I wanted to bring you on so I could learn. And that's my own selfish reasons, because I really do enjoy beef, especially high-quality beef. And a lot of people don't understand that there's meat that goes to you know, the chain stores, meats you can get at, at, a, at a nicer butcher shop, and then there's the restaurant quality beef. And, you know, if somebody charges $40 for a steak, you go, oh, that's ridiculous. I could buy that for 5 bucks." No, you can't <laughs> because the restaurant's probably paying 20 25 bucks a pound for it. But, uh, you know, if you want the best, it's it costs a lot to produce. And I know yours is not cheap, but give us an idea of the process and why you have to charge what you charge. Yeah, well, first off, it just, uh, the way I look at our production system is that you really got to start with the soil. So we own and operate our own ranches up by Mount Shasta. And then we also have uh, complementary winter range properties down in Tehama County near the town of Cottonwood and Red Bluff, uh, about 11,000 acres down there. But we, um, we have a, then we have a great genetic program where over the years we've been buying bulls that have some fantastic carcass traits. So when we go to a, an auction to buy a bull, we'll flip to the to the pages where we've got bulls that have good, you know, that will have a genetic predisposition to have good marbling, good ribeye size, those types of things. I mean, we're still very focused on production traits and growth characteristics, but, you know, we really want to make sure that we're getting bulls that have, you know, uh, very, you know, that are prone to having good marbling and those, those kinds of things. So it starts with the genetics, it starts with the land, and then from there, we raise a really good, um, you know, we keep these animals on some of the best pastures out there. People ask me how you finish an animal, and I say, well, you really start at the day it's born. Mm-hmm. And you've just got to make sure that you're, that animal is hitting all of its nutrient objectives at every, every day of its life. It's not missing a meal. And so as long as it's uh, got adequate uh, nutrition and ideal nutrition at every step, that's, that's a huge, um, huge advantage for getting good quality meat. And then from there, um, we need to raise our animals longer than the traditional uh, conventional feedlot system. Uh, we're not just uh, force feeding animals. We're letting nature really take its course. And so those things take time. We do a high intensity, short duration grazing program. Some people call it mob grazing, where we bring a big group of animals in to a, to a some irrigated pasture and they graze that down and then we move them on to the next. And it's a constant rotational grazing uh, which is really best for the animals, but also best for the land as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we talk about ages here. So we don't process any of our uh, fat cattle up in, you know, we, we really have to wait till about 24 months. And that's when the fat really, um, and the flavor really expresses itself in the mm-hmm. meat that we found with a grass finish. Well, meat. traditionally they go like 16, maybe 18 months from the time they exactly. born. Exactly. Yeah, you put them in a in a feedlot, and uh, you'll 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 stick them in front of a nice big trough of corn, and um, and it tastes like candy to them, and mm-hmm. so they they have a great time with that. But um, you know, you also that's not exactly what a ruminant is. Uh, is used to eating, mm-hmm. and so that's why you've got complications. Well, there. another, uh, we've only got about two minutes, but there's a couple of things we want to get out real quick. Uh, yeah. norm- normally, like in a traditional outlet, they'll harvest the beef, and within two or three days, it's in the grocery store. And the restaurants, any quality uh, steakhouse, uh, they, they they will hold their meat normally in a, in a cryovac or in a plastic bag that's been sealed for maybe a week 
10 days, two, possibly two weeks. Um, and it is an aging process. It works. But what you guys do is something completely different that's very rare in the United States. So just real quickly, describe that. Yeah, we, uh, we do a whole carcass hang. So we'll dry age the beef and uh, we'll hang whole carcass for about a week. And then from there, we will uh, take it into our fabrication room where we'll take all mid- our middles, and then we will do additional aging on those middles. And that's dry age. And that's, yeah, and that's dry aging. And so, um, you know, there's wet aging and there's dry aging. And, you know, that's, there's a debate going back and forth on which one's better. But we've made the decision that uh, dry aging tastes uh, excellent yeah. with our product. Of course so you, do, you, do, you do. You, yeah, you do it for, uh, what, a couple of weeks, three weeks, dry age? Yeah, you know, it, it, it uh, okay. could be 28 days to uh, it's minimum right. well, we're gonna, we're, we're, to 45 days. We're, we're going really gonna, gonna gonna to have to go, but, uh, you know, that process loses weight also, and that we're talking about, that's why it costs what it does. But go to yep. the website, and it's not that difficult. It's not Dell. It's B E L. Um, B-E-L-C-M-P-R farm. farm. Look that up. Go on the website. You can order um, directly from the farm. We appreciate that, James. Thank you. We'll bring you back. Hey, woman. Get me young. Let's go. The Soft Science footbed absorbs the shock of pounding waves, engine vibration, and even rocky terrain. Soft Science shoes are roomy and relaxed, and they drain and dry quickly. Check out the Soft Science Fin Fishing Shoes and Boots and the Fin H2O for kayaking and canoeing. They're lightweight, slip-resistant, and won't mark your deck. See the new styles for men and women and get your pair on at softscience.com. Used by fishermen who know where to get the best fishing gear around, AFCO makes the highest quality fishing rod components worldwide. If it says AFCO, you know you have a quality rod. Guy Harvey Clothing, the best outdoor clothing line anywhere, is also available through AFTCO. Longest lasting, functional, and best looking clothing you'll be proud to wear. Only the very best materials and workmanship. As soon as you put it on, you'll know the difference. Look for AFTCO at quality retailers or go to AFTCO.com. Have you noticed the changes in Google lately? Did anybody line you out? You can't fake it anymore. They know who said it first, who said it best, who said it the most. Who is the most popular? And that just happens to be me since the late 80s, which means that I can put up a page, a post, or a website, optimize it properly, spread it around to 22 million people, and put you on top of your results pages for your chosen searches basically overnight. WhiteMountainBusiness.com Don't want to wait that long? Already have a website that you thought was optimized and doesn't rank anywhere? I can fix that too. Maybe you don't want to wait. Maybe you just want to call me. 928-228-9228. That's 928-228-9228. I've done it for literally thousands, and I can do it for you. Fish on! It's a big one. For passionate sports fishermen who value first-class fishing experiences paired with personalized service and amenities, all-inclusive Salmon Falls Fishing Resort on the Inland Passage reinvents the Ketchikan Fishing Getaway. Guests enjoy exceptional gourmet cuisine, superior fishing excursions, fully guided charter or self-guided in center console boats accommodating three anglers, updated guest rooms, and suites. On-site fishing processing to clean, freeze, and pack your catch. Rooms range from log cabin rustic to modern. Our 52 rooms offer the ultimate in comfort after a long day of sightseeing, fishing, and exploring Ketchikan. Non-anglers love Salmon Falls, too. Shopping along Creek Street, kayaking, hiking, whale watching, or gathering around our fire pits with a hot beverage. All at prices less than expected. Just pull up Salmon Falls Resort in your search engine. Welcome back to Fish Talk Hunt Radio with John Hennigan. This is John Hennigan and our host Frank Selby. And Frank and I are right here. very excited about coming up to visit with Matt Herod at Salmon Falls Resort in Ketchikan, Alaska. And we've got a trip put together that is fantastic. All-inclusive, high-end resort. 
uh, cruiser fishing, self-guided fishing, um, and, a, and a gourmet restaurant uh, at a price that is probably a half or a third of what it should be for spending five nights, four days in a high-end resort in Alaska. So we need to, we have a trip put together that we're, because a lot of people, timing isn't working out, so we're putting together a trip that uh, Matt's working on the dates right now, hopefully sometime around the end of August, and hopefully that'll fit better. Of course, Frank had surgery not too recently, so he, he's concerned about being well healed. Is that right? For well healed? Yeah, that works. <laughs> anyway, um, if you don't mind, Matt, give us an idea about Salmon Falls, where it is, what it is, and we've only got less than two minutes. Okay, yeah. Salmon Falls is located on Revelia Island in Ketchikan, Alaska. So we are actually closer to Seattle than we are to Anchorage, which makes us the most convenient mm. destination uh, in all of Alaska. So mm. only an hour and 45-minute flight from Seattle. We take you up at the airport, and then we take you out to our fishing resort. We're a one-stop shop. So mm-hmm. we do everything from uh, all the processing, all the fishing, um, rod, reel, bait tackles provided, including rain gear. And then we also have a full-service restaurant and bar on site. We're all inclusive, so all your meals are included. Mm. Um, we have one of the better views, I believe, at any resort. Last month, overlooking Clover Passage and the, the beautiful waters. And so we think that you guys will really enjoy your stay there. Yeah. But, um, uh, just a couple of quick comments. Is that uh, Ketchikan is the first stop on the Inland Passage. So when you go there, there's a lot of islands up there, a lot of group. It's very protected, and uh, normally it's T-shirts and shorts. But, you know, in Alaska, I can give you a weather report two years in advance, <laughs> and you, any day you tell me. In the summertime, it'll usually be flat, calm in the morning. Sun, go out, and usually around 2 o'clock, you'll get some wind, maybe it's a little bit of weather, and then, and then it'll flatten out like a lake. But uh, it is, it, they call it the tropics of, of Alaska. And it's very protected, but it's also known as the salmon capital of the world. And yeah. that's primarily what we're after. But you can also get um, halibut. Definitely get halibut, especially when you're guided. And then uh, there's lingcod and cod, and, you know, there's just a lot of life. And the seagulls are like... Um, Excuse me. Then uh, the eagles are like sea, uh, seagulls. They're everywhere, and they're yeah. We like to. When you're coming into dock. If you've got a couple of short fish, you'll put one on the on the deck, and then when you come in, you throw it up in the air, and the seagull will swoop down 200 feet above you from the tall trees on the granite cliffs and, and grab it. And it is uh, just just an amazing experience. And you get to really experience Alaska. It's not like a cruising by on a cruise ship where you see it from a quarter mile away. One more qu- quick question for him. Uh, you have kayaks and uh, other stuff that you can do there if you get tired of fishing all day, correct? Yeah, there is other opportunities for you here as well. Now, it's not included, but I do have a kayak company. Yeah. I will have to check that my dock, and I do have hiking trails near me where we can give you yeah. a shuttle ride to the nearest yeah. hiking trail. Or if, if, or, or if you really want to have some fun, get a float plane. But, yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're, we're about out of here. Uh, so we appreciate uh, Matt. We'll be talking to you some more uh, when we've got some exact dates. We'll pro- hopefully try and bring you back on next week so we can uh, talk okay. more about that uh, trip at the end of August. All right, okay. you are listening to Fish Hunt Talk Radio. Go to our website. You can listen to the show as many times as you want. And then go to Salmon Falls. You just type it in, Salmon Falls, catch a can. And beautiful, beautiful place. It's like a huge log cabin with the waterfalls in the back. It's gorgeous. All right, we got to go right now, but uh, go to the website. Thank you, Matt.